handy beaders. I designed a new beaded chain and today I would like to show you how to make this chain and give you some suggestions uh, how to use it in your jewelry making. I have an example here so you can imagine uh, how it looks like in real life and the example is this uh, beaded chain bracelet. I think it quite imitates um, uh, precious metal chains so when you are a fan of precious metal chains I think you will like this tutorial and maybe make some jewelry pieces for you so let's see what you will need let's start with the stringing material you will need either nylon monofilament thread I have used 0.25 mm thick nylon monofilament thread or fireline. I prefer fireline in crystal color. For the sake of uh, the demonstration, uh, I will use black uh, Nymo thread uh, so you can see what I'm doing uh, really clearly but I recommend you to use one of these two types of uh, thread uh, so uh, the uh, final chain will be uh, really nice and firm and in shape. Then you will need some beads, of course. Uh, I have made uh, this bracelet using Toho hexagon beads. I used uh, these light topaz toho hexagon beads and the size is 11 uh, o and i have another um, color of these beads and these are orange beads i like the um, inner coating of these beads because in the final piece it looks like it's made of um, precious metals uh, chain as you can see and then uh, you can use bugle beads as well. Today I will work with uh, these uh, bugle beads. These are from a Czech company Preciosa Ornella. And uh, I recommend you to uh, use those short bugle beads. So it will look really nice and uh, kind of regular. Uh, you can use uh, round seed beads as well, but it won't be so edgy. The links of the chain uh, won't be uh, so edgy and won't look uh, so regular as it's in this case. The last group of materials you will need to make a bracelet or earrings or uh, necklace uh, are findings. I have used a uh, lobster claw clasp for, uh, for my bracelet. Then um, some small piece of this chain to make it adjustable to bigger or smaller wrist. Then some jump rings. Or you can use uh, any other findings you will need to make your jewelry. And then uh, those ordinary tools like scissors, a ruler, uh, some pliers. As I said, I will work with short bugle beads today. And I will need 22 of them uh, to make one of my links. It will be 11 rows and we will have two beads in each row. When you would like to have your links bigger, uh, you should uh, add some more rows. When you would like to have it smaller, you should make the basic strip shorter. It really depends on the size of the beads you are using, but for these, um, let's say, uh, 11 O's or uh, maybe 10 O's, 9 O's, I think 11 rows will be just perfect. I don't recommend to go under 10 rows because of the shape 
uh, of uh, your link. So prepare 40 centimeters of your thread. I decided to use this black nylon thread or with the needle, but it's just for a demonstration purpose, uh, just uh, for you to see uh, clearly what I'm doing. Uh, and I emphasize to use either a monofilament thread or a polyfilament thread, but those kind of threads which are uh, strong and quite firm, so you will end up with a nice shaped link. So let's start. You have 40 centimeters of your thread and then you want to pick two bugle or hexagon beads and slide them down. Leave here uh, about 7 to uh, 8 uh, centimeters long tail and um, you, you've picked two beads so go through the first bead from the uh, same uh, direction and go through it and pull uh, your thread tight. I like to hold my thread like this, uh, so this working thread is always um, on the left side when exiting the bead and I won't make mistakes because I have uh, some kind of uh, direction and some kind of system, it's systematic. So uh, let's continue and pick another two beads and go through the second bead you uh, have added uh, in the previous row and pull you should have your beads sitting like this this is the first row and this is the second row and you uh, you should have them like this. And I forgot to uh, speak about the stitch because uh, I was thinking about what kind of stitch is this and I don't know. I think it's a mixture of uh, leather stitch, herringbone stitch and uh, square stitch. I'm not able to identify which one is this stitch. So if you know the name of this stitch, uh, I will be glad to see um, your information in the uh, comment section below this video, but I think it has no special name and it's kind of mixture of these stitches. Maybe it's herringbone, I'm not sure. Uh, but let's continue and so you are exiting here from this second bead uh, in the first row and you want to go uh, through the first bead ever added to your work and through the um, top bead so go through those two beads and pull your thread now you have something uh, which looks like this. Uh, I would like to keep tension on my thread so the work will be a nice, not too hard, but quite a tension here. So I'll pick another two beads and go through the second bead in the second row. So it's uh, the last bead in the previous row, like this. Just this one bead, you don't have to go all the way down to the first row and pull. So 
so you have um, some kind of I don't know how it's called some kind of squares uh, star starting forming here you would like to go um, through the first bead in the second row through the bead which is next to this you are now exiting out of and through the bead which is above this one when pulling your uh, when pulling your thread you don't want to catch it around another bead you want to sit in here like this it hides here so now we have three rows one two three let's pick two beads and go through the second bead uh, you have added in the third row in the previous row and pull make your beads sit nicely here and go through the bead next uh, to this bead you are now exiting out of it's the first bead in the third row and the bead which is above is the first bead you have added in this current row and pull again you don't want your thread to catch somewhere so be careful and pull nice like this and again two beads go through this bead pull and go up through this bead and the bead which is above and now your strip looks like a strip <laughs> and you have five rows repeat the same step down and up and pull and again until you end up with 11 rows Now you have 11 rows and you are exiting out of the same bead, uh, not the same, just bead on the same size as uh, your uh, tail on the other end. Uh, now you would like to join the ends together and make a knot here, tie it together because in this first row uh, you have two loops on the bottom of this first row I'm not sure if you can see it because of the um, threading stringing material I have used but trust me when you follow the steps you have two loops here so take a needle and uh, pick 
one of these loops I don't know which one is loose one will be looser than the another and pick it and pull it like this until you will have it here like this now you can see here are just one loop and with this uh, tail with this end you want to go you want to join the ends together and go up uh, through the uh, last bead through the bead you are exiting out of at the end just the other direction like this join it together and with the, this first tail go through the last bead here like this and pull take the other end and make it stay out of the way and now you are uh, on the end of your strip and you uh, should go up the next bead uh, next to this bead uh, which you are out uh, which you are exiting out of like this you went down and now you are going up like this and you want to uh, continue uh, going uh, through the beads here so you want to go through the I think it's second bead you you have ever added it's in the way like this and pull it nice now oh I'm sorry I have left bit here so maybe it's better visible right now like this so technically you are making a square here a circle um, you are going through again through this one bead this one this one and the second one and you, now you want to uh, end your circle or square let's say by exiting out, out of this bead it's the first bead you have ever added So go and put your thread in it. Mm, it's quite different than the other beads because it's not so sticking out. So go through it if you can manage it. You can use needle if you want. And now we are here so basically we did the same thing as we did on this side and we made it like this and it looks like square and now you have your uh, two ends facing uh, each other so easiest way uh, to end your uh, loop your link is to tie a square knot here now you have tied a square knot you can hide the knot into the bead And you can go through some other beads to hide the end of your tail. 
and then you can trim it off on this side and you can do the same thing on the other side so go through some off beads in the right direction and in the right let's say column like this and again trim cut the end the tail like this now you can nicely see uh, how it looks when you are working with Nymal thread you can compare it to the bracelet I have made and you can see the shape is uh, quite different it's because of the name of thread and your uh, ring your link won't be uh, so nice in shape when using uh, Naimo or 1G or some of these threads but just for the demonstration uh, I made this link by using Naimo Continue making some more strips and I will show you uh, how to join the links or the strips together to make a chain so you want uh, you have one uh, link done and I have prepared uh, two more strips each of these strip is different so you can see the difference uh, in the size of the beads thus the size of the strip and it's the same uh, number of rows but you can see it's different I made these strips uh, using uh, nylon monofilament thread uh, so then I can show you uh, how it looks when it's bent uh, and uh, joined into the circle into the link and it looks really nice in shape comparing uh, to this one which I made using Naimo so you can notice the difference in the length so take another strip you have done and go go through the first link you have made uh, it's better to check which end has those two loops I think it's this one I'm not sure but I think so uh, I don't know if you can see it but there are uh, two loops on the bottom uh, in, in the first row you have made so you want to pick one of the loops the one which is uh, loosened this one isn't so we can go and pick the one loop which is loose and pull the string out of this loop out of the beads and continue to uh, make the loop to close uh, the link I'm not sure if you can see it because it's quite dark here but I will try to make it clear for you so this one is the end uh, from the beginning of your strip you should hold it like this so you will be sure it won't slide like this so hold it here like this and take this one uh, end this beginning end begin tail um, I close uh, the circle and go through the 
speed you are exiting out of with the end tail. It's the this speed. It's on the same side uh, of your strip. And go through it. Pull the string. Now those two ends are getting close to each other like this. With the same end continue up through the next bead and pull the loop so it doesn't catches uh, it doesn't catch anywhere and go through the next go up through the next bead so now you are creating uh, the square of the circle or the circle and now you want to go down this bead which is next to the bead you are now exiting out of And pull everything nice and tight and now you have the those two ends facing each other so you just want to make uh, a square knot here so tie a knot and again pull your thread through uh, the beads through some of the beads so you can uh, hide the knot and you can trim the tail I won't do this right now but I would like to show you the difference between the shape so this one is made uh, by using uh, nylon monofilament thread and it's better in shape it's not so um, flexible let's say it is more firm it has its shape and this one was made using the nylon thread and as you can see it's kind of I don't know egg shape <laughs> it's not nice circle like this one so uh, continue doing this process until you have the desired length uh, of your chain and then just add uh, some findings uh, on the ends of uh, your uh, chain or some kind of another chain it depends what you would like to make out of the, this PD chain and you will end up having nice bracelet or necklace or earrings whatever and it's really versatile uh, let's say universal so you can use it to make uh, much more things I can imagine you can use it like uh, those uh, Christmas ornaments if you are uh, like you don't mind doing uh, long chain I think it will be a nice Christmas ornament on your Christmas tree or um, on your door or something like that so thank you for watching uh, I'm happy to see you like my videos uh, comment below if there's something you want to know or if there are uh, any suggestions uh, to me uh, for me to make and uh, have a nice week and happy beading bye bye